if we could get uh, one one policy recommendation that you would give to somebody who is could be remotely receptive to it. <laughs> uh, Marie, do you want to start? I think the main one that we have from our report, and by the way, policy was not in the scope of this report, um, is what we've been hearing all along, that we desperately need more research, and there should be an absolutely organized body of, of uh, an organized approach to doing that. That was very fast. That it wasn't was. You, you, you know, I was prepping myself for a You don't have a, a full two minutes. I, I guess I do. I, I would say that really we're in a situation where policy is outpaced science. And um, despite the single term, as I mentioned before, you know, that we use marijuana to describe everything that comes from the plant, it certainly isn't all the same and probably shouldn't really be considered the same. We need a lot more work in this area. But it's really imperative that as researchers and people invested in public health and policy, that we're able to study the effects, the good and the bad. As scientists, we're supposed to present unbiased findings. Regardless of how you feel about the issue, you have to report what the data show you. And in order to do that, you have to be able to do the research. So I think that legislation which eases restriction for clinical research and provides expanded access to a wider platform um, of products already in use, with appropriate oversight, of course, um, <laughs> ultimately informs public health and policy efforts and keeps our consumers, whether they're recreational or medical patients, safe and well-informed, which is their right. I also think marijuana's been around for thousands of years. We tend to forget this. We sometimes treat it as if it's brand new. It's been around since at least 2700 BC used across the, the world by millions of people not likely to necessarily be going anywhere despite its legal status. Regardless of where you go in the world, um, doesn't matter whether it's legal or illegal, people are using it. So our job, again, as scientists and policymakers and legislators, is really to find out the good, the bad, and the truth and help people make good, sound decisions uh, so that they can take the best care of themselves possible. Vaughn? I think those are great points, and actually I would respond to that. I think marijuana has certainly been around for thousands of years, but we're seeing it used now in ways that we've never seen previously. It's being introduced into vaporizers, into e-cigarette type devices. There are the, the industry is innovating new ways to make the product appealing and deliver it to, 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 to people so that it optimizes the effects and increases addictiveness. So these, these are concerns that I have that I think that the landscape of, to, of marijuana products is changing rapidly. Rapidly, um, and with it may come an epidemic of use, particularly among young people, uh, which, which could undermine their well-being and, and the public health in general. So those are my concerns and, uh, you know, we do have a science base on which we can draw from and that is the one that we've used very effectively with tobacco, which has got tobacco use rates among youth at, at half that of marijuana. We need to um, increase uh, taxes on marijuana products, or at least to adopt a uniformly high level of excise tax on marijuana to make them less affordable, less appealing to kids. We need to restrict promotions and advertising, um, storefront advertising, which which is uh, uh, um, used in most uh, uh, states where marijuana is legalized, it, uh, varies from place to place and allows certain health claims or certain claims which, uh, which uh, may promote interest and, uh, in, among youth and uh, reduce their perceptions of the risk of the product. So th these are strategies which we can fairly quickly and immediately employ to reduce demand for marijuana products and, and, uh, and restrain an industry which, uh, which is really targeting youth and targeting vulnerable populations as we speak. I'm going to put just a little bit of meat on the bones of an actual political next step to, because uh, I agree with everybody, there needs to be a call towards research in this and not just clearing the barriers. I think the federal government should be putting significant resources uh, into public health and medicinal research for marijuana. Uh, my, my suggestion would be uh, the federal government has been stuck in a debate on whether or not legalization is a good idea for 60 years. Uh, uh, this group, um, myself maybe included, but, but particularly people on this side of me, um, uh, has an obligation, I think, to band together as a coalition and, and really approach the federal government in an actual lobbying context uh, to say, we're not here to debate the merits of legalization. We're here to say uh, it's absolutely bananas that we can't do research on this because it's happening everywhere right now and we are not, we are not serving the public good by not doing research on it. And so carve this out specifically. This is not about the legalization of marijuana. This is about uh, good public health policy. Uh, and I think until this group comes and has its own voice at the table uh, and own its own very specific lobbying policy, it's just going to be the same noise it's been before, which is uh, pro-legalization pro versus anti-legalization. Uh, and that's not a debate that's very helpful to America. Thank you. 
And my own policy recommendation, which nobody has asked for, is just legalize it. <laughs>